Welcome back to the Social Seller Podcast with Connor Paulson, where we interview the world's highest quality communicators, professionals, business owners, creatives, and everything in between. It doesn't matter what industry you're in, if you're a high quality communicator, there's a good chance you're living a lot happier life, but you're also bringing those opportunities into your life almost like a magnet. My guarantee is that on this show, we only interview people that I, one, look up to, and two, that I know are gonna continue to kill the game for years to come, and I wanna make sure they're on your radar. But what I've learned is by asking the best questions, we get the best responses, and that's what the highest quality communicators, our social sellers, are all about. Let's hop inside to the Social Seller Podcast. I try to always give selflessly. Don't expect anything in return. If you think you're gonna donate a dollar uh, and I've donated millions of dollars over the years, but I've never ever expect anything in return. Yeah. Zero. If you're trying to say, "Oh, I'm going to be a good guy and give money, and then I'm good, to, I'm going to be," bl-. no. You give selflessly. You give from the heart, and most of the time, you have to give anonymously because a lot of people that receive the aid, they don't want to know who it's from, and they may not take it, especially if it's somebody you know, right? They just feel like, you know, no, 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 you know, but I love giving anonymously. I read the paper sometimes. I see people in trouble, you know. Every Sunday I do cancer runs for people who have cancer. I get in my car and I go to different hospitals. I'm flying to MD Anderson this weekend, you know, for people over there that have cancer. And I I help them with inflammation, you know. It's not a cure, you know. I don't cure anything, but I help people reduce the pain. And they can live a longer life, a better quality life with some of the products and some of the, the technologies that we've been able to, uh, you know, to explore over the past, you know, five to ten years. There's a lot of things I've learned about water, about sound healing, about light, about lasers, you know, about everything. There's so many modalities uh, that we can use to heal people. And, um, you know, that's what I try to do. Everybody has, you know, a, a special circumstance, and we try to fine-tune that and bring the experts to the table. I'm not an expert by any means. You know, I'm just a – I have no degrees in, in medicine or, you know, no PhDs. I'm just an average guy, and I, I just know what works through the people that I surround myself with, which are all PhDs and MDs, an amazing group of uh, people that I've been very blessed to be with. They've all – was through my whole life I've been attracted um, and they attract they come to me and ask me to help and that's what I love about being where I'm at in this world is like I can move a mountain I have been able to when people say it's impossible I've heard this from the Red Cross I've heard it from Governor Schwarzenegger when he was our governor I've heard it from a US president says what you're gonna do is impossible don't do it and I do it I get you know so I love when people say you can't do something because I see the word impossible. I see it says I am possible, not impossible. So everything is possible, and that's the way I live my life is to move mountains and you know, to create bridges between the private and the public sector because the public sector has got a lot of issues. There's a lot of red tape. Uh, there's a lot of obstacles, and I can take the private sector and bridge it and make, it, make stuff happen literally overnight. I... I know you can, and looking into, again, just being able to do some of the research, I was excited. This is our first time meeting today, and and thanks again to your son, Aaron, for for being able to connect us. I see a lot of awesome traits in in him, too, and now just getting to hear your story, I see it. In in some of those things that I notice, you know, being first generation in in a lot of ways in this country, right, that's naturally going to be a drive. Growing up and having that that pivotal, being low income or or aka like the hood in in the northeast or Jersey growing up, but then being able to have influences and positive influences like your stepdad in, in your life, especially to come in at a pivotal time at seven, right? And then to experience that. So you had this hard work, you knew what the polarity felt like on, you know, this side. And I know, you know, it creates some version of pain. And I relate to you too, just dealing with, um, you know, family members growing up and, and showing love in different ways that, that uh, might not be how you and me agree today, right? And it took me a long time to forgive and to understand, you know, that's just the way, you know, from this instance, I'm not going to say names, but this individual was raised that was love to them. Um, what I do want to hop into is you have this background, and I relate, right? I grew up on a, on a farm in Iowa, and I know a lot of our listeners, um, you know, it, probably have some version of a similar story. They want to do awesome good in the world and might not have access to like cities like this. And I I say this because I've only lived here four years and I realize there's so much information and incredible information and 
influential people that are talking about a lot of this stuff that we're talking about today. But if it was five years ago, and even if I was just coming out of you know college or, or whatever, because in, in that environment, this would be considered somewhat, you know, like woohoo, right? Or like or whatever the, the woo 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 woo. Yeah, yeah, woo woo. -woo. <laughs> I'm, I'm like yeah, naming yeah, a cocktail yeah, yeah. at a bar yeah, yeah. right now. Yeah, exactly. And and I say that simply because this is so true, and it's here, and the information's out there. And I realize when I had those beliefs, it was simply the what is the word. I wasn't allowing myself to be in an educated state. Like, why, why, how can you have a blind opinion without, you know, understanding some of these things? So, where am I going down this rabbit hole with the context is you're fortunate to be connected with a lot of these successful people. You name the degrees, right? I feel very similar. I feel fortunate to have friends that are a lot smarter and a lot more influential than me. What has allowed you to do that, though? Like in, in very, very just like layman's terms for anyone out there that's like, yeah, it's probably easy when, when you're a quality communicator um, and, and maybe you feel confident. Or maybe they could say, well, you have family, that you had business partners that were family and, and whatever advantage, what would you speak to that individual that, you know, deep down wants to, to live a life like, like you are? So when you're building companies an entrepreneur, a lot of... CEOs, founders are really egotistic. They have a lot of a big ego, and and you. It doesn't matter who gets the credit as long as your client gets the benefit, the value. Mm. So, don't worry about who gets the credit. I think Ronald Reagan said that pretty well, and then he also said something: trust but verify. So every time somebody tells me something, I didn't believe my partners at first, but I did a lot of research. I read over 4,600 PubMed articles on curcumin, inflammation, cancer, you know, uh, rice bran, you know, aloe vera. I read all these molecules are so powerful, these immunomodulators that we have in the product with the turmeric extract. You know, the research, the studies that they did, I went through them with a fine-tooth comb. I even found some errors in the math on how they calculated the, the, uh, the, the, the percentages on uh, VEGF and TNF-alpha. I found some errors, and you know these are experts that are PhDs and editors that made some errors. So I found errors in research papers, and so I'm very OCD, very you know precise. I triple check everything. I don't believe double checking works. So if you're an entrepreneur, don't double check. If you send an email, call them, uh, text them, make sure they got the email. If you send the file, make sure they can open it, they can read it. Um, so. Triple checking is key. You have to triple check everything. Love that you say that. That's so, such a gold nugget there. And I want to make sure, like, I'm, I'm back here just taking mental notes. I ran out of pages to take notes. But that's so big even in sales, too, is, is to be able to do this and to do it effectively and, and almost build it into our day-to-day -day routine. That, that institutional approach to sales. Educate people. Be kind. Kindness gets you everywhere. Um, you know, I've been very lucky. I've had some amazing colleagues that when times are tough i need airplanes i need this whatever i need you know you just ask and it's amazing people say yes but how do you, you have ask? to have kindness how do you ask with passion conviction and you have to have the ability to deliver what you say if you say hey i'm gonna go out to new orleans and do x y and z you better do that you know and follow through on your promise uh so i've had some amazing people uh, very prominent people in the country. Some of the people have built some of the largest computer companies in the world uh, that have helped me um, along my way. Um, you know, and uh, Richard Branson helped me with Haiti. I mean, you know, he, he was amazing. You know, I sent an email out and boom. Next thing you know, you get a fleet of Virgin America to move doctors, nurses, and supplies. Um, there were some amazing people that have helped me along the way. And those people never want the credit. They, it's amazing. They stay low they stay anonymous and that's something else i'm realizing i haven't gotten to this level yet i've i've been fortunate to do the volunteering and and in college it was um at a retirement home and and that taught me a ton about being around individuals and in, you know that i've lived three to four times a life and then out here i didn't know what it was for the first year but then getting involved in streets uh streets of hope for san diego so there's the it's helping the homeless get back on their feet but then also homeless children uh, which is a, a sister kind of branch of the nonprofit. and i love that you say this because what i do notice and i remember i also read the paper with my dad growing up even when i couldn't read i wanted to hold the paper because that was just all the farmers that's what they yep. hung out, drank coffee and did that um and 
we would have these types of conversations and um, I, I realized that the anonymous donors aren't doing it for the attention. I've met a handful of professionals and, and I look up to anyone that's giving, but then you meet the ones that want their name on the cafeteria of the university, you know, and, and the, the university will make it happen, right? There's, I'm, I'm seeing there's different types of donors, but I don't know how to point my finger at it, but the anonymous ones are usually coming from a place where they've been doing this a lot longer, is my guess, where it's, they know that there's something that happens in the universe, and I've just barely tasted this. So I love what you're saying, because I, I hope that together we can encourage others to just give in whatever way, find something meaningful, because by giving something magical happens, you naturally start to automatically feel abundance, and, and this gratitude feeling starts to come over, and you realize, dang, I think this world's actually kind of like happening for me, and like maybe I have a, an invisible hand, like kind of pushing me in the direction that is, usually it feels like it's going in the right direction. Sometimes it scares me, but I do it, and I'm always happier after. I did a podcast a couple of weeks ago with Roxy and her sister Susie. They're called Straight Up Sisters. They're Latino community. I got hundreds, maybe over a thousand text messages from her listeners. Those hundreds of women, I changed their lives because they weren't honoring their body. They're just obese. They weren't taking, honoring, taking care. They weren't watching what they're eating, not exercising. They were eating garbage. And yeah, women crying, leaving me voice messages, you know, a woman wow. asking me if I want to get married. I mean, it's the craziest thing, the impact that you can make on people with just a story. And I hope your listeners will start honoring their body and uh, be able to give back in any degree. You know, uh, you know it's interesting. Um, a lot of our, our, our operations, when I go into like in New York, I wouldn't let any NGO put up their sign. Everybody wanted to put up their sign. The Red Cross gave me a quarter million dollars a week for food, catering for five and a half months. I wouldn't let them put up their sign. But they did put up their sign at the very end, you know, which is interesting because I, I just don't like people trying to raise money on other people's backs when you're in times of, uh, of despair and, yeah. and you're losing everything. So the good news is um, I empower the local communities. I hire the local people that live in the neighborhood. We hire them. We pay them. They, we get volunteers. And it's the local community that knows the people that are in need serving them. We put them to use. But the most important thing is, you know, when people lose everything in disasters, just giving them one or two hot meals a day and just having a place where they can come in and talk in a tent with heat, you know, or air conditioning. That's kind of a game changer, just giving people a hot meal because they lost everything. So, but they need to be around other people. They can't be sitting in a park or in a trailer home or, you know, and nobody wants to leave their homes. You know, so a lot of people have nowhere to go, which is crazy. 90% of the people don't have anywhere to go. They don't have family like we have family all, all over. Yeah. Uh, but same thing with New Orleans. That was interesting. We, we did move a lot of people. We brought a lot of people all around the country, you know, like over 300 to San Diego. We bought them. We got them. We got them homes, we got them kids in school within three, four days, and um, they all had jobs within a month, all of them. You know, thanks to the owner of uh, the Petco Park, the Padres, and, and, and the Chargers at the time, they were amazing. You know, those owners, they offered everybody jobs and everybody got their own home. They didn't have to share a house. Uh, so people, families helping families, and uh, inspiring other people to do great. I was on a plane about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, and I'm sitting in coach in the middle seat and this guy comes over to me and he's next, you know, and he says, you know, I saw your story and I left my job and I started Families Helping Families here. This guy's name is Phil Harris, amazing guy. And uh, this guy's fed, I don't know, 10 million people. I mean, all over Africa, he's, he's at every mission. He's everywhere and they do these, they do a million meals. They package them at the, at the, at the Qualcomm Stadium here. You know, a, a guy, and, and these are the kind of people that hear the stories and they, their lives change. And that's one person I'm just, you know. It I speaks get, to him. I get hundreds. Yeah. You, you got to interview Phil Harris. He's an amazing guy. Phil Harris? Phil yeah. Harris. Families Helping Families are right here in North County. A guy, the guy is unbelievable. Rock star, rock star, rock star. There's yeah. people that uh, just know how to do it right and they can scale their operations on a global scale. He's one of those guys. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about influential people in your life. What percentage of those very influential people in your life 
from like, let's say when you were 20 till today, that upper 10, five to 10%, right? What percentage of them came through you being successful in business and exiting companies and being the board and, and being on the board and, and you know getting these accolades? What percentage of, of your influence people came from the success in business versus the giving back? Mm, that's interesting. Um, and, and obviously this is a, a vast generalization, but yeah. this is the only way I can ask it because you have... Just I would say most understand. of the people that I, I've met that are influential, um, we met through social circles uh, or through business, you know, social circles through business. But, um, you know, with the exception of the CEO of the Red Cross and some of the people there, you know, I met them on, you know, missions and times of need where you want to partner with everybody to help those people that are suffering to make the biggest impact. So when you when you when you're working with presidents of countries, and, uh, and I was actually translating for the president of Haiti at the time at the White House, because I speak French, and you know, he didn't know where the money was, that they, it was $564 million was raised, and he hadn't gotten a penny. He didn't realize that he had to write a grant, and he didn't know the whole process, so I wrote the grants. I reopened the general hospital. I built, helped build the trauma centers, and the Red Cross funded everything. They were amazing. You know, but you need to communicate. So that's the biggest thing in all disasters is the breakdown of communication. So I've built a lot of relationships by just being at the right place at the right time and caring. So, you know, everything is about, you know, being at the right place at the right time. I think that's the key. And, and anybody, every door's open in this country. Every building door's open. Maybe with COVID now you have to wear a mask and there's some restrictions. But back in the 70s, 80s, and 90s is like... You know, just growing up, I mean, you have access to anybody and just... It's still true. Just it's be still consistent. True. It's a different strategy. Yeah, but you have to be consistent. You have to be kind. It took me like six or seven months to get through to Robinson, the, the CEO of American Express at a time when I, I had an issue with Steve Jobs and his next computers, but he finally took care of it. I got through it. I had to send roses, chocolates, holiday gifts, and I finally got through. The secretary put me through to him, and I ended up talking to him, but... There is no CEO, there is no founder of any company in this world that you can't get to. And we, you, are you on Clubhouse? I am. Okay. So on Clubhouse, there was a, a big, you know, like four or 5,000 people in a room one day, and it's like, how do you access all of these big, you know, everybody's like, oh, my Rolodex, this, that, you know, it was the easiest thing to do, and I'll give your listeners a tip. You want to go meet anybody whether it's Bill Gates, Michael Dell, Richard Branson, you know, Donna Karen, you know, Beyonce, every celebrity, everybody, CEO, you just have to find out what their social cause is. Normally the wife has a social cause, could be the, you know, Arthritis Foundation, the Cancer Society, and then you buy a table and you buy, you become a sponsor or you buy one ticket and then you go and you say hello, you meet the person. So you can go meet anybody you want. That's one way. The other way is you could be authentic and keep shooting emails at the person if you can get their email. Everybody, you know, it's funny. Like I know a bunch of billionaires and they, they read all their emails, believe it or not, but they don't, they don't have time to reply. Yeah. But they will read most of them. So you could shoot an email. And if you, if you could capture it, I remember Michael Dell telling me, if it can be my preview line, you got to get me in those yeah, first, yep. first two or three sentences because that's how they scroll, right? If you can get me in my preview line, uh, I'll reply, you know. So those are the kind of things that you just have to be creative and never give up and support, you know, nonprofits. Uh, you know, but be prepared. If you're going to go and talk to a celebrity and you want something, know what you're asking for. Don't go in and ask for a photo. The worst thing you can do with celebrity, I never ask for photos. My ex-wife used to ask for photos for everybody, but I never ask for photos. I've been with some of the top celebrities in the world, and I will never, never ask them to take a photo. I, I just think that's, if they want a photo, they'll ask you. If, if they want to take a photo, then they think you should have one, they'll say, hey, do you want a photo? But I never, I never ask for photos. I, don't, I think it's a little cheesy. I think if you're there on the, if you're a man on a mission and you want to get shit done, roll up your sleeves, and have a plan. You know the the best book I could recommend to all your listeners do. Uh, is in 1990 came out with this book Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yeah. 
that's kind of that's the only business book I've really ever read in my life. Uh, that one, and then I read uh, Atomic Habits just recently, which I love that. I listened to that book, too. It was good on Audible. But, uh, you know, Stephen Covey says, seek first to understand them, be understood. And the most important thing is think with the end in mind. You know, if you can get out of bed and you have a blueprint uh, of what you're going to build, yeah. or you have a map of where you're going to go, never leave home without a uh, map and directions of where you want to go. Yep. You, you know, success has, an, uh, as, uh, success has an address. If you know where you're going, you're going to get there. If you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. Yeah. So have a plan and set some goals along the way. And I always think with the end in mind. I'm not a daydreamer. I'm a manifester. I manifest. I make shit What's happen. The What's the difference? Big difference. You dream, you dream. It's dreaming. You know, manifesting is action. A lot of people have dreams, but they never can get to them because they don't take action. When you manifest something, you already know how to get it done. You know, manifesto, it's, it's a plan, you know. Yeah. If you Google the words, you know, a lot of dreams don't come true, you know. But if you, uh, if people dream, there's too many dreamers out there, right? I like people that get up one day at a time. You know, I don't play the lottery. My lottery's getting up my health and going to work. You know, everybody that's ever won the lottery, including my mother's sister, wish they never won. Miserable people. 90% there was a I special the same on thing. it. Yeah. So don't play the lottery because you don't want to win it because you'll lose all your family and friends and yep. your life will be miserable. Uh, but manifesting things is key and being able to know where you're going to getting there and you can never do it alone. You know, eagles soar alone. But, you know, if you look at a dove, it's always got a pair, you know, and that shows love and gratitude and find your partner your better half be inspired by your girlfriend your spouse your sister my sisters were my partners for many years my ex was my partner for many years but find somebody who inspires you to do great and stay with them you know you need that support at home you don't want to do it alone because it's boring to be successful alone you get pulled in so many directions you know when you have the fancy cars and you have the the big the big homes and all the everything you want is everybody is jealous and there's a lot of you know um, people trying to pull you away to be with them right so you don't want to be pulled away you want the glue to bring you together and you want to stick together so you you know find those five people it could be family members you know and just be be true to yourself and and you know practice gratitude self-love is self-care and yeah. honor our body I think that's the key with I, a little prayer absolutely and I, I love the the big word to take away there is is the practice right practice gratitude and that's how, how we've continued to talk about it i didn't realize this until the last couple of years but it is a daily practice like it's it's going to the gym for me it is before i leave bed and this was um oh gosh why am i blanking on his name right now uh in the biohacking world uh doctor oh on the mind he's he's oh my gosh i'm blanking it'll come to me in a second um from stanford the neuroplasticity it, it, it'd be here u.s based um, and, and this is like a well-known name right now in uh, Joe Dispenza. I don't okay, know Joe. Yeah, 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 Dr. Joe. I just talked to his, uh, the guy who produces his music, uh, Goldstein. I think it's, uh, uh, yeah, I just talked to him and, and we're just trying to get some product at uh, Joe right now. Yeah, and, and, and last simply week. put, it's, yeah. it's the, the morning mindset. And, and the I morning see mindset, how religions yep. do this too, but it's the practice is the point I want to make is that it sounds so simple and it, it can be, but go do it. And go figure out a sustainable way to do it each day. Now, I don't remember to do it each day. Most days. Today, I did. And it was immediately being grateful for another day. And that's why I relate to, you know, my soul has reentered my body. I love that. Uh, the second one is, and this is what Joe, Dr. Joe talks about, is, is getting, and I close my eyes at this point, and for five to ten seconds, if not longer, I'll visualize a little bit of the day and start to feel the emotion of excitement for the unknown. So getting excited for the unknown that's going to unfold. Now, almost always my mind goes to, oh, well, something adverse could happen. Beautiful growth opportunity, right? So just a quick reminder, and I love that you say that because your work with veterans coming home without two legs, I couldn't imagine waking up and having that. But having, again, the practice is the difference, right? It's, it's easy to read these things, but read the books, listen to the podcasts and the YouTube. It's how we start to, to apply them to our life and, and hopefully in a sustainable way. The other point I wanted to make was on manifestation. And Earl Nightingale, who I'm sure you're familiar with, 
talks about success being the gradual realization of a worthy ideal, right? So meaning success, and this was in the early 1900s that he's coming out with this. To my, in my mind, this is like the Wayne Dyer before Wayne Dyer is Earl Nightingale. And the gradual realization of a worthy ideal saying, I want to be something and then going out every day and, and doing your best to take actions to get towards that, right? And this can be completely fine if you, you want to be a janitor, a school teacher, a mother, right? And I want to be the best stay-at-home mom and, and to give my kids the absolute love and nurturing they, they need. It's stating something, just like you had talked about with your goals, right? A ship without a plan, you know, it's, it's usually going to run up in, in the right. harbor at some point, exactly. right? Um, would you agree with, with the daily gradualization? And, and I heard this mindset in college was a professor that mentioned like, yeah, just think in the 1% mindset, right? So even on your worst day, and he's telling us in college, right? And we were going to a very notable party school uh, at the time. And he's like, just remember, and this is to the entrepreneurs, even on the days that you feel really hungover, you need to take, do one action, do the 1%, do the one action. If it's a Saturday, Sunday, Sunday morning, you feel like, who cares? How bad do you want it? And it's send at least an email that could, uh, some version of business development. And I don't know if I applied that that well, but the methodology was, at all costs, I care about the future. And, and I love what you're saying, because when you come from this giving gratitude state, stating, I have more than enough, right? you start to attract these things. And, and you talk about where you're gonna meet these influential people. Are there any other places in particular, now that you've lived out here, you've seen the polarity of both sides, you've made the money, you've had the cars, right? A lot of the listeners aspire to do those things and, and then they don't know what's next because I'm guilty of it too, right? What, what do you know now kind of looking back in, in regards to that? Interesting, compounding question, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, compounding a lot today. Yeah, yeah, not not a problem. Uh, um, look, um, you really have to believe it in your heart. Um, we all have this mindset that we're trying to. You know, you, you hear all these people talking about mindset, 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 but I believe that we have to start focusing on heart set. You know. Is your heart in the right place? Because a lot of people say, hey, if I do this, I'm going to achieve this. If I do that, I'll get this. Stop wanting things and start building your heart and your soul. When you live in the heart and soul, then your mind comes clearer. I think Rumi says the deeper we live in our heart, the clearer the lens you know, comes. You see things better. Um, you know, you got to trust your gut. You know, a lot of people... Don't trust their gut. Damien the shark, I think, uh, Damien, Will, yeah, Damien John the shark, he said it best. He said of hundreds of investments he made on Shark Tank, he was on Clubhouse. And uh, I was talking to him on Clubhouse. Blew me away. And every investment he ever made that wasn't right in his gut, he lost money on. There's very few investments that where his gut was right, the person, the product, that's where he made. And same with me. If I go back and I look at all the investments and everything that I've done in my life, and my, if I, you got to trust your gut. I remember in high school, I never used to study for tests, and I used to ace all my math tests and my science tests, and I would just always trust my gut. I would never try to go back and answer that question the second time because it would always get wrong when I would go back. Same on the SATs. I did well, but if I try to go back, you know, my practice ones, I would go back. I would do terrible, but my first shot... So you got to trust your gut because your gut is connected to your brain, vega nerve, and it's 15 inches. And yeah. what's in between there is your heart. So your heart's kind of the mediator, you know. And, you know, we got to have our heart set in the right place. A lot of people's heart is, are not in the right. They tell you they're going to do things. I've, I, you know, I've had partners up and down. Everybody's been screwed, you know, in business you know, over the years, you know. And those people... Um, they're not blessed. They don't have a healthy family, a healthy lifestyle. They, they are all miserable. The people that did me harm in the world is because their hearts weren't in the right place. They were just con concerned about the money and the things, acquiring things, wealth. Yeah. That's, if you stop looking at material things and start looking at humanity, you know, your heart and how we can help other people's hearts and minds, you know, uh, practice mindfulness. Meditation is amazing. But, you know, my life transformed when I discovered hot yoga, meditation. I became a better human being. I was good 
I was good. I was a, I'm a great father. A, a good, I was a good husband. I was a good brother, son, uncle. But now I'm great because I defined my version 2.0. I got a software upgrade seven years ago. And it just gets better and better every day by being able to share my story. I never really got on uh, the platform until April is my first podcast ever. Wow. I, I just felt, it, since I didn't have a PhD or an MD, I didn't want to talk to people. You know, I'd rather just be the guy behind the scenes in action. And that's all I really did m most of my, my life. The guy, I didn't want to go out and talk about my accident. I didn't want to talk about certain things that I was ashamed of. Yeah. But Clubhouse gave me my voice. I met a few people on Clubhouse and they said, man, you should get on a podcast. You should talk more, you know. And I went from, you know, 100 followers one day and I woke up and the next day I had 10,000. You know, and like from 100 to 10,000 and like one day I think I got four or 5,000 followers on Clubhouse on something I said that resonated with a group of 8,000 people, you know, and it doesn't take a, a lot to really move people and the feedback that I got in Clubhouse, on Instagram, on Facebook, the feedback that I'm getting is like I'm, I'm making a difference. And so it's my heart set that led my mindset to say, hey, I don't need a PhD or an MD degree. I don't need a college degree. I'm yeah. a college dropout, you know, and my son Aaron's a college dropout too. You know, I don't know if you know that. I and didn't. I yeah, he dropped sure out. I didn't mention that. Yeah. yeah his, his second year, he dropped out of University of Miami. And, you know, he's proud of it because I want to be like my dad. And my son Isaac got a degree uh, from Ohio State. He's a Buckeye. You know, he graduated in three years, uh, you know, with honors. He's a brilliant kid. Uh, so, look, at the end of the day, you can do whatever your heart tells you to do. It's your heart you got to follow. Let your heart, you know, tell you where to go, and then your mindset will be aligned. I think that's the key. If I had to give advice to any, you know, entrepreneur, there's so much that I've learned over the years, but when I follow my heart, it's the right thing to do. And a lot of people said to me, hey, you know, you can make more money if you go this way. You know, one billionaire said to me, do you want to be right or do you want to be rich i said sir i want to be right every single time yeah. and i will never break the law or do anything to be rich yeah. you know i spent a year in jail five years doing community service i know what it is to be away from my 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 family and everybody you know it's the worst thing to do is to not have any privileges you know when yeah. you're in jail you lose all rights in a county jail you know your life changes you become very grateful for everything when you get out of there you know yeah. because it's, it's a life-changing moment, and I wanted to make myself the best human being that I could for myself and my family. And that's the, the heart set that I live by. Yeah. You went through some growth opportunities in life. Yep. And, and I'm sure there's going to be more. But you have the mindset of coming from enough that, that this is my opportunity to level up and, and do it for the ones I care about, the, the real why, right? Because life almost becomes a little bit more effortless when you start to find a little bit of that congruency. I really look up to you, and I know there's levels well above what I've experienced. But just the little bit that I have, I'm like, oh, you know, this is very appealing to me. Um, you know, in these last couple of minutes, I want to maximize your time. I know you're a busy guy. Where is the best place for people to get in contact with you? Is that your Instagram? And we can include that below. Yep. And I want to include sure. the website. Instagram, yeah. David Perez is grateful. All one word. D-A-V-I-D-P-E-R-E-Z is grateful. G-R-A-T-E-F-U-L. Grateful. Beautiful. Okay. And, and, and on LinkedIn too, David Perez is grateful. Yeah. Beautiful. We'll so, include all of them. Yeah, I love and, that. And I know you brought some, some goodies here. And, and I want to give you a minute to, to be able to explain I know these are products that, that come from the work that you've done um, yep. and researched in, in a lot of the higher level <laughs> biohacking. So could you just talk a little bit about this yep. for anyone that wants to continue listening? Absolutely. So um, this product here is Cogni Nourish is our flagship product, our first product that we ever launched. It's got uh, three years of rolling clinical trials or one year interventions. Uh, we did a, a study at the University of Miami uh, Miller School of Medicine on this product here. It improves memory and it also reduces inflammation by 50% uh, TNF-alpha and it improves your COG score by eight points. If you're not taking a drug, if you're taking one of the five leading drugs for Alzheimer's dementia, it improves it by four points. This is a, an amazing product. It's got a nutritional uptake. There's uh, rice bran, aloe vera, inner leaf powder. Uh, there's um, Mexican yam powder, flaxseed, golden flaxseed, which is phenomenal. I just learned a little bit about this golden flaxseed, uh, more about it because a lot of research has come out. This is like a super vitamin. It's got every, like most minerals, vitamins, cofactors, 
Between the rice bran, the flaxseed, and the aloe vera, these are very powerful immunomodulators. So if you're experiencing any type of pain, any type of inflammation, or you just need a good you know, uptake to improve your immune system, this is a great brain booster and immunomodulator, so it improves your immune system. This should be part of your regular diet every day. Just take a couple teaspoons of this a day and uh, say goodbye to all your, your flus and viruses and all your aches and pains. And then if you take, if you take the curcumin, this is- I'm excited to yeah, test this one. Yeah, this is a, this is a pretty cool product. Um, so if you take the curcumin and you could just uh, put it some water here, we've been drinking it through the show here and you just drop a couple drops in here. That was like six to eight drops. It's based on your weight over here. Based on your weight tells you how many drops. These are 30 day supplies. It's a turmeric extract. It's the only water soluble turmeric extract in the world. So yeah, so turmeric is a, is a, is a fat soluble molecule. Very hard to, to get it into your bloodstream and your gut. And that's why most people need, you know, the literature, the science on PubMed says you need 1,200 to 5,000 milligrams. What they do with 1,200 to 5,000 milligrams, we do it with 15 to 90 milligrams. Wow. And it's amazing. It's uh, nano size. It's at the molecular level. It's a macromolecular complex. We put a little bit of iodine. There's a little of vitamin B12, D3. Uh, and, and this version here, the green one, has aloe vera, inner leaf powder. And the, the one that we use, um, this is for athletes and for women's the health. The green one? Yeah. That's for athletes and women's health with the aloe vera. And then there's the one with the rice bran, which is what I just put in here. This is one of the most powerful molecules in the world. Most people don't even know anything about rice bran. It's the outer layer of, a, of the kernel of rice. It's the embryo. And um, most people throw that away. They shake it because all rice is brown and it turns white when you take the rice bran off. And uh, this stuff has been well researched clinically on PubMed. There's 75 peer reviewed published clinical studies just on the rice bran by itself. Wow. We take the rice bran and we mix it with the curcumin and the iodine, the B3 and D12, and it's a game changer. If you have any liver health, any type of chronic inflammation, doesn't matter what it comes from, where it comes from, we're gonna tackle that inflammation and get you out of pain and we radically reduce it literally overnight. It's fast. So if you got a headache, a migraine, say goodbye to it in minutes, hours max. Uh, and you'll see significant improvement after 30 days. So take the products for 30 days. There's a 90-day money-back guarantee, like I said at the beginning. Um, these products will change your life, especially if you have any joint pain, arthritis, lower back pain. Um, you know, uh, even people with various skin conditions. If you go on our website, you'll see all the testimonials on Amazon too. You can get uh, some of the products on Amazon as well. So it's pretty interesting to... Um, to be part of a, a, a movement that's taking food-based uh, supplements. And we believe food is medicine, and medicine is food. So you don't need a lot of toxins with the over-the-counter drugs to get you addicted. So if, if you're suffering from any mental illnesses as well, we have a psychiatrist at, at, univer at Harvard University that have been using this um, as well. They've been prescribing this uh, to a lot of their patients. Uh, it's, it's really good. Um, you know, for stress relief. And one of the things that we do on every product that we sell on our grow sales, we give back to honor.org to our uh, Navy SEALs and, and uh, Special Forces Army Rangers. So we give a percentage of our grow sales to, to that foundation. So everything I do, all our companies, we have a social cause and we help, um, we help uh, you know, humanity heal. Uh, for people that can't afford. So it's been great. We've been helping a lot of vets all around the world with, uh, with these products over the years. So we've given millions of dollars of product away, uh, and we continue to be you know, good stewards of our uh, formulations and our, uh, our environment as well. So my name is David Perez, and thank you for having me. David. Thank you. You are enhancing vitality of people's mind and body. I think that equals happiness and fulfillment. It is. If you were just tuning in, rewind to the beginning. That is a hell of an episode. Thank you for being here. Every Tuesday, we drop a new Social Seller Live, our Social Seller interview to make sure we're providing you value, not, not only with influential people that I want to make sure are on your radar, but also to take some of their life advice and, and be able to, to use it and, and take action just like we talked about today. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers David. Salute. This is awesome. Salud. Thank you. Before anybody didn't listen or anybody said that I
Alrighty. Because these are ones. 